Well, good evening. Good to see you in the Lord's house tonight. Hope that you've had a good week. It's been a busy week around church here uh, and uh, will be all the way through the end of this week as we get ready for homecoming. Looking forward to a great time on Sunday as we celebrate 45 years of God's blessing here. There's been a lot of work going on around the church uh, property here over the last uh, a few days and will be all the way through Saturday. Uh, if you've been following or listening to the radio station, you know that they have been busy out there as well. Some of the work that we were concerned about them getting started on, they have gotten started on, so we're thankful for that. And uh, some of you may have seen the picture of that guy about 180 feet in the air yesterday uh, up there doing the prep work and today started painting our tower. He'll finish it tomorrow. Uh, I was out there yesterday, or I actually this afternoon and saw that it looks to me like he's got the red areas painted and the white ones are still to go so we'll post some pictures of that once it's done and uh, and our tower will be pretty again amen it's been in its current state uh, since Hugo knocked the original tower down uh, in the late 80s and that one was put up in its place and I think this is the first time it's been painted since then so uh, one of many things that we needed to get done while we were out there working and so uh, we're thankful for the opportunity to be able to see some of those things go forward. Uh, still working toward getting our FM uh, translator up, uh, and uh, the right now we're we're working on uh, trying to make sure that we can get internet out there. We may do a temporary fix until uh, Spectrum is able to get done. They won't give us a date for when they'll be done. The only date they've dangled out there is December sixth. And what that means is by December 6th, they'll tell us another date. I know how this works with them. And so uh, we've been through this before uh, with our last project. So uh, we're going to improvise and, and do our own thing to get, uh, to, to get it out there from the old white building temporarily. At least that's our plan right now. And uh, because we have got to make sure that we get that online. And the sooner the better. We, you know, once you, get, once you get into December, man, holidays and stuff, everything just grinds to a halt. We're not going to take chances with that. Uh, so we're working very hard and our guys are working very hard uh, on that appreciate all the work that everybody has put in both the radio station and here at the main church property uh, over this week and uh, and and all that will be uh, happening in the days ahead uh, headed towards Sunday and of course we want to pray that the Lord will bless in a great way uh, on Sunday brother Frederick it's good to see you back around I saw your car over there the other day but I couldn't remember what you drive and I couldn't, I couldn't decide if it was one of Miss Nadine's guests or if it was you. Uh, but then uh, I saw the, uh, I saw the the blind open on the on the patio and said, "It better be them." <laughs> It's so uh, uh, glad you're back. If you don't mind, come on up here and lead us in prayer tonight as we get started. And I say if you don't mind, it's, it's easier for our live stream folks to be able to hear you if we get you behind the mic. So if you would, pray for us as we get started this evening. Yes, sir. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, God, we do thank you for the uh, wonderful opportunity we have to gather together this evening, Lord. We pray, God, that uh, tonight would not just be another Wednesday, another thing that we do, but, God, that uh, you would just stir our hearts. Pray, God, that the music would be uplifting. We pray, God, for the many prayer requests. We pray, God, uh, as they read them out, that, uh, that we would pray silently in our hearts, that, uh, that we would uh, just uh, unite together as a church with the uh, people that are hurting around us right now. We pray, God, for the pastor. Give him wisdom. Give him boldness as he preaches this evening. Help us, God, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah, what a Savior. Let's all sing it out together. Man of sorrows, what a name for the Son. Oh, 
to share a quick missions update with you this evening. Brother Mike wasn't feeling well this evening and asked if we could uh, pinch hit for him tonight. And, uh, well, that was a real pinch hit, wasn't it? Don't know what in the world's going on with that. No, we got a little sensitive on the peas there. Uh, sounds like they, they're, they, they've got it dialed in now. Uh, let me uh, mention a few, uh, 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 just a quick update on the Jason and Lori Holt family. I think you've got the letter there with you tonight and just want to call your attention to a couple of things. Uh, they are just now beginning to slowly uh, allow uh, churches in Chile to reopen. Uh, and uh, some of the, uh, several of the, the churches that the Holts have had a part in starting their 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 sister churches and grand and grand churches as as uh, we as uh, brother Smith put it the other night uh, have entered the initial stages of that plan and on September 13th the Liberty Baptist Church in Peral was their first church allowed uh, to hold Sunday services. It sounds as though they're actually having to go through a process to be approved to restart. Uh, and uh, a lady named Baria walked in the door just minutes before the service. She'd heard the music outside, wondered what was going on inside, walked inside, sat through the service, and a young Chilean pastor took the word of God and led her to Christ after the service. And so we thank the Lord for that. On their first Sunday back, they had a young lady trust Jesus Christ as Savior. So we thank the Lord for the good work that the Holtz are doing uh, in Chile. Uh, the Chile Training Center is mentioned there, and I want to remind the church family uh, that we sent a, a, a fairly sizable gift down there uh, to help with the purchase of uh, that Chilean Training Center. I'm wanting to say we sent $5,000 for that, but I don't remember for sure. Uh, so this is something that you have directly invested in, not just in supporting the missionary, but also uh, the, for, the buying, uh, for buying the building there uh, for their training center. Uh, he said at the time of this writing that they had nearly 70 students signed up, and one of them was their daughter, Catherine. Now, I knew the Holtz before. I knew, I knew Jason before he got married. I had him in a missions conference in Alabama, and he wasn't even married yet, so it's really hard for me to relate to his daughter uh, being in the, in the college there. Uh, but she'll be coming back to the States to finish her training uh, there in Georgia eventually, but is uh, taking uh, uh, her, her first initial classes uh, there in Chile, and that's exciting to see as well. Also, Brother uh, Holt has taken on a new responsibility, and just to be very clear, they're not leaving the mission field. They're not. Uh, they're not uh, changing what they're doing there on location in Chile, but he has taken on an additional responsibility as the Latin American Director uh, for Vision Baptist Missions, and this will uh, uh, mean that he will be uh, taking on the responsibility of encouraging and supporting other church planning missionaries throughout Central and South America, and uh, and I know that Jason will do a, a great job with that. Uh, I, I will say this, and I know this is easy to say now, but I remember when we had him in our conference in Alabama, and uh, I wasn't, I did something I don't normally do. At missions conference, I, uh, even if they cannot stay for the entire time, maybe I'm trying to get somebody in that's already got a meeting scheduled on one end or the other of our missions conference, I always tell them, I want you, even if you've already got another meeting scheduled Sunday, I want you here on the Wednesday to start the meeting. Or if they have a meeting scheduled Sunday and I can't get them here, I want them at least here Wednesday up through then. You know, I want, I want them, I want them uh, there for either the first part of the conference or the closing part of the conference because Wednesday and Sunday is when they'll meet most of our people and most of our people will meet them. Uh, but there was just something about Jason when I talked to him on the phone way back then uh, that I broke my own rule. I had him in uh, for a Thursday, Friday, and he was gone. Those were the only days he could come, but I wanted to have him in. And uh, as I said, he, he was engaged, but he wasn't married yet. And uh, there was something about him that I just really felt strongly that, that the Lord really had his hand on him in a unique way. And God, God has, uh, has, has, that has been proven uh, over the last several years. Uh, those of you who were here at their last update, know that the work there in Chile has is really multiplying at an exponential rate now they've uh, they have uh, they have passed addition a long time ago and the work is multiplying and God's doing uh, some great things there and of course we are so very thankful for every missionary some labor in hard difficult places where it's a great great struggle uh, and that's not putting him ahead of anybody uh, but uh, but it's a, it is a, a quite
quite amazing to see uh, some of what the Lord has been doing there in Chile. And we want to pray that the Lord will continue to work. Pray as the churches reopen uh, that they will, uh, they will be able to have the freedom that they need uh, to serve the Lord and to continue uh, to grow the work there uh, and uh, ask the Lord to continue to bless. Uh, Jason and Lori Holt. Uh, are our missionaries serving in Chile and we thank the Lord for the privilege to partner together uh, with them. Uh, I want to I shift gears very quickly and move on to our, uh, to our church prayer list here and uh, I want to apologize ahead of time. If somebody was supposed to have had something put on here this week and we missed it, uh, I, I want to apologize to you ahead of time. Miss Donna saw, passed each other several times today and that was about it she's been working on one set of things I've been working on another and we have barely we've been both been here at the church all day and barely seen each other I've seen more of brother Brandon than I've seen of Miss Dinah today uh, and uh, we just haven't we never did get a chance to collaborate and work through the prayer list this week like we normally would so if we've missed something please uh, uh, be patient with us and let and uh, and we'll try to get that uh, updated uh, you you may you may fuss at us after the service if you fuss nicely, okay? You don't fuss nasty. We don't have any nasty fussing. Just fuss nicely, and we'll get it taken care of next time. Don't fuss at Miss Dinah at all, okay? Uh, she uh, Just fuss at me nicely. Don't fuss at her at all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> It'll be fine. Uh, let me uh, let me mention a few things to you tonight to pray about. Continue to pray for Teresa Aller as she is recovering uh, from the surgery there on her arm. Uh, ask for the Lord's grace there. One of the things I'm praying specifically for her uh, for is that uh, her healing will be complete and that her piano playing will not be hindered uh, at all. Uh, I don't know that that's ever even been in question, but I, I, I'm like. With all of our pianists, I enjoy hearing them play. Amen. I want them to be able to serve the Lord. So pray that uh, the Lord will bless with that. Continue to pray for Nina Barnes. I spoke with her uh, daughter this afternoon, and they have her now in a, uh, in a rehab area of uh, over here at Toomey. She is not, uh, she's, uh, not uh, in Florence any longer. She's here at Toomey in a, uh, and uh, is, is in a, a rehab uh, situation there. By all, uh, by all accounts that I'm getting, still doing well and, uh, and, uh, and is on track. Uh, but do be praying for her as she tries to recover from uh, this recent heart surgery. Um, let's continue to pray for Brother Murray Ellis. I know he has upcoming heart procedure as well that they're still trying to get scheduled. Uh, continue to pray for the Fanatis. They, they had their birthday early this week. Uh, one, of the, one of the few times I've ever seen that, a husband and wife with the same birthday. They celebrate their birthdays on the same day, and we got to uh, try to be a, a blessing to them the other day. But do lift them up in prayer. They do have uh, great, great, great struggles. Both he and her are, are struggling uh, tremendously. Uh, he with dementia and then her with, uh, with a, a back trouble and just, just living in a lot, a lot of pain, uh, having a harder and harder time moving around and so forth. So continue to pray for her. Continue to pray for Linda Ganey uh, as uh, she uh, has uh, her uh, macular degeneration. Those of you who are familiar with it, uh, it has progressed to the wet uh, macular degeneration now, and so she's struggling with that. So if you would, uh, pray for her as, uh, as that obviously has her very concerned. Uh, pray for the herrings. I, I understand that, that, that both of them are kind of needing, but I don't think either one really wanting to have any surgery right now. And so uh, pray for them as they continue uh, to struggle along. Pray for Marcy Hudgens. Uh, I uh, heard from Marcy uh, yesterday, and she asked me to pray specifically uh, that, and I think she'd be fine with me sharing this with you. She asked me to pray specifically that she might feel well enough to be able to come to homecoming on Sunday. She's not been able to be at church in a long time. She said she'd really, really like to be able to be at homecoming. So if you'd pray with uh, me and with her toward that end, uh, I know she'd uh, very, very much appreciate that. Continue to pray for Brother Tom Suggs as he is uh, 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 battling cancer right now, going through treatments. Uh, pray for our grieving families. Pray, uh, continue to pray for the Thomas family and ask for the Lord's great grace in their lives as they take those very, very difficult initial steps. Uh, and, uh, and I think that's uh, um, probably uh, made a little bit more difficult by the fact that there is such great distance between 
them and, and either side of the family, and that makes things much, much harder as well. Uh, so uh, do be praying for them and ask for the Lord's uh, great grace in their lives right now. Also, pray for Brother Brandon and Miss Jessica. Brandon will be traveling uh, back up uh, tomorrow, the funeral service. Uh, they had a memorial service at their church there in Colorado where they attended. But they will actually have his, uh, his, uh, his funeral service and burial there uh, in Indianapolis uh, on Saturday. Uh, so pray for them. Brother Brandon will be flying up there tomorrow. Uh, because of the way the flight schedule's worked out and some of the things that they'll be doing there uh, with the family and trying to be a part of all of the funeral arrangements and so forth, uh, they are going to drive back that night instead of fly. So they'll be driving back uh, on uh, uh, during the during the night uh, on uh, Saturday night because they would like to be here for homecoming so if you would pray for them uh, for traveling mercies and for grace for their them and their family uh, during this uh, during this time of the funeral service on Saturday morning um, if you would continue to pray for the Wilkies and ask for the Lord's grace for them as they struggle through with uh, a lot of a lot of health difficulties uh, for the Wyckoffs as well. Uh, they're they're at least in the right section tonight and on the right side of the section, just a little further back than I'm used to. Uh, but continue to pray for them. We pray especially for Dale. He continues to have a lot of a lot of headaches and just difficulties that they've not been able uh, to diagnose and a, a treatable cause for. So uh, pray for uh, him as well. Continue to pray uh, if you would for the Levi's as well, uh, as they are mostly homebound now and of course not able to be here uh, in the services. Uh, pray if you would, uh, especially for Maget Jones. I think a lot of you that are on Facebook are aware that they've been battling COVID in their house for close to two weeks now. And uh, Maget, Maget got it first, worst, and longest. She has really, she's really had a struggle with this. Uh, and, and I will tell you, this is one of the things about this virus that's really, really weird. We know the things that they've told us, and, and, and it bears out statistically with a lot of folks. Uh, but it is also very, very unpredictable. In our situation, the person that had the most trouble uh, was my daughter, who was in her mid-20s. Uh, and Maget's very young as well. Uh, recently ran a half, a half marathon, but is, uh, has had a lot of trouble with this. She's in very good physical condition, but has really had a lot of trouble. And uh, it's the, a, a praise, though. She, she's really struggled with sleeping, and the last two nights she slept pretty well, she said. And so that was a great blessing. Uh, pray that that continues and that she can recover well as she seems to be uh, heading uh, in the right direction but it's just taken a little bit longer with her and she's had a really hard time so I hope you'll continue uh, to pray for her and for the rest of the family don't mean to don't mean to say don't pray for them but the rest of the family uh, I think the kids have done pretty well and Adam ha had some symptoms and so forth but I think he's doing much better now and uh, they're just trying to get mom well again so if you would be praying for uh, all of them uh, and uh, I know Maget said today she's just been blessed in a major way uh, for, uh, with uh, how uh, the church family has reached out to them and encouraged and helped them uh, through this time, and I'm thankful to hear that uh, as well. Uh, let me mention a couple of others. Uh, I've been asking you to pray for Kathy Harmon. I do not have a new update for her, uh, but I know she was supposed to be getting some treatment on that leg this, uh, this last week. I'll try to find out more on that if I can. Brother William Hayes asked us to be praying for Gene Kelly. Uh, if you would, be praying for him as he's recovering uh, from a bleed on the brain recently. Um, Brother Gene Rowell, I, I exchanged texts with him uh, yesterday and today, uh, and uh, he's doing better. I believe he's four weeks out from surgery now, uh, but is still uh, still on a, on a on a right track, but but kind of a slow track, and being very careful. Uh, so, if you would continue uh, to pray for him, uh, uh, a good pastor, good man of God from there in Casey uh, at Gant Street Baptist Church. Um, uh, pray for Becca Taylor, who has cancer. Uh, Wyckoff ask us to be praying uh, for her. Dinah, she may be on here. Do we have the Pope's granddaughter? Um, I know that had come in a week ago, and I'm struggling to find the name. Crystal. Give me the first letter. 
Yes, I, re- I, I, I knew it was there, and I just couldn't find it. Uh, it's uh, about th- uh, three-quarters of the way down, two-thirds, three-quarters of the way down, Christinal uh, Steziali. Um, she has uh, their 11-year-old granddaughter. She has a heart valve issue uh, that uh, I think is going to require surgery. I talked with Millie on Sunday, and uh, she said that, uh, that uh, the, they saw her the other day uh, and said she's just really very lethargic, has no energy, really struggling right now. So pray for her as they get ready uh, to, uh, to move forward and try to, to, to help her. But uh, lift her up if you would. Uh, I know they'll very much appreciate that. Uh, Brother David Jones uh, spoke with me before the service and asked me if we would uh, to please pray for um, uh, his brother and his family, uh, and, and uh, the Lord knows the need there. But he asked me if you would to be praying for Danny Jones um, and, and family. Uh, let me grab this. I know this one came in via our church Facebook page, and I want to make sure uh, that I get, uh, get this correct. Uh, Marie Lenartz asked us to pray uh, for Lenny Harrison. Uh, this is a, a friend of their uh, families uh, that, uh, that is, um, go, goes way back uh, with, uh, 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 in their relationship with Marie's parents. Um, this was, she sent this to me Sunday, uh, and uh, several days before she had been taken to, uh, Miss Lenny had been taken to the ER, uh, had pneumonia. Uh, and uh, the blood glucose levels were very high. She also has a broken tailbone from falling because of a dizzy spell uh, and uh, has an infection, a a, a severe infection in her foot, a lot of different uh, problems there. Uh, But uh, as of Sunday, her breathing had been pretty labored, uh, and there was a lot of fluid on her right side. Uh, They were going to do a a procedure to try to drain the fluid and get her strong enough because they do expect to have to amputate her left foot, and they were trying to get her well enough that she could withstand that. Uh, So pray for her, uh, and and I've not gotten an update since then, uh, but if you would, uh, pray for her as uh, as, uh, they try to treat a lot of different things uh, going on there right now. Uh, thank you for your continued prayers for my mom. Uh, she is, uh, uh, they're, they're doing some different things with her medication right now that seem to be providing some help uh, and, uh, uh, you know, kind of a, uh, we'll, we'll wait and see and see how it does long term, but so far in the short term, they seem to have been able to help her a little bit and we're thankful for that and pray that that will continue uh, to go in the right direction. All right, a lot of things that we need to pray about tonight, and as I said, if we missed anybody, please let us know, and we will try to uh, to get them uh, uh, to get them on here and make sure that we um, I- include them. Uh, Donna, I've got Marty Bird on here, and I don't have the update on that. Was did you? Okay. Oh, there's Bridget. I'm sorry. Huh? So this was supposed to be your dad? Yeah, I know it's your stepdad. Okay, so this, this is right then, right? Okay, I just want to make sure what we had on here was correct. Um, uh, spiritual needs there as well, but also uh, pr- uh, pray for him as he's struggling uh, with his blood pressure. And it, since we mentioned your dad, how is he doing right now? Okay. Okay, so for those on live stream that couldn't hear, maybe uh, uh, Bridget asked us to continue uh, to pray for her dad. We've mentioned him in the past. He did have recently have another stint put in, but they're still having other issues and trying to track down uh, what some of his other problems are. Still very much need your prayers. He's still struggling, so if you would uh, be lifting him up. All righty, well, we'll get ready and, uh, to go to prayer tonight and ask the Lord to uh, meet these many needs, a lot of folks that need uh, a touch from the Lord. So let's bow our heads and ask for the Lord's help tonight. Heavenly Father, we love you and thank you for your many blessings. You are such a great and wonderful God to us. Uh, Lord, uh, I said on our devotion today that sometimes knowing how undeserving we are, I almost feel like sometimes, I know you can't be because everything you do is right, but sometimes I almost feel like you're too good to us. Uh, because we are so undeserving of even the least of your favor, and we're just so thankful for the great grace of God. 
we planned on learning it this year, but we have experienced it in a great way. We've experienced it in ways that we didn't know we would need to. And we thank you for your help and your blessing. Lord, I do pray for your continued blessing and help. I do want to ask you as we head towards Sunday, I know this is still a very odd season. Still so many of our people not able to come and be in the services. And uh, I think of what we would have typically expected here in this room uh, this coming Sunday uh, for, our, uh, for our 45th anniversary homecoming. And Lord, we know things will be a little bit different. We're going to be in the, the gym over in the Family Life Center. We'll still have a lot of folks that are physically unable to come. Uh, but Lord, the, the truth of the matter is it should still be a high and a holy day and a special time. Because we are there to celebrate, we will be there to celebrate your great blessings over 45 years. And Lord, through, through sunshine and shadows, through mountaintops and deep valleys, you have been with your people here at SBT for four and a half decades. Uh, I, I, when I, every time I say it, I'm, I'm amazed by the, the amount of time. Lord, I know so many churches that never make it to this point. And Lord, so many churches that do make it to this point and are no longer healthy, are no longer well, and are just struggling and trying to find some way to keep doors open. But God, you've been so good to us. You've blessed us and you've helped us. And through all of the seasons of a church's life, and some of them are wonderful and exciting, and some of them are sad and difficult, some of them can even be perilous, and every church goes through those times eventually. God, you've brought us through so many different things. And you've brought us to this point where we can rejoice in 45 years of your blessings. And I pray that Sunday would be a great and a wonderful day. Lord, I pray that you'll lay it on our hearts even in these closing days before we get to it. That we would think of those that we know that perhaps this would be a great opportunity to invite somebody to church. Somebody maybe that doesn't know the Lord. That they might come and get to hear the word of God and hear the gospel preached and see and be able to see with us what God can do when, when he has given the reins and given an opportunity to in a life, in, in lives, and in a church's life. And may they desire and want what we have here and be born again. I pray you'll work toward that end. I pray that you'll work in the hearts of the children of God. And Lord, we understand if folks are not physically able to come. And we understand that for some it just, it's, just, it's just not best for them right now to be out in a crowded situation. And we know that, but Lord, I pray that unless those are the cases, that you would motivate and move and encourage our people to come. Uh, help us to have a great, a great gr crowd there that day. Help us to make a, have a great, uh, make it a priority to be, uh, to be there and to be in your house. And Lord, with all the planning that's taking place, we're working very hard. We want, we want your house to, uh, to, to be as it should be, to be fit for your worship. Uh, we want it to. We want it to be uh, uh, as 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 nice as it can be, as clean as it can be, uh, and we want it to be glorifying to you. And Lord, I pray that you'll help us as we try to accomplish that. Uh, I thank you for the the time that so many have already put in this week, and for others who I know plan to as the week progresses. And Lord, we want to make uh, we want to make sure that uh, that the that uh, that the if the if we pray for the glory of the Lord to fill the house, that the house would be worthy of Your glory as much as possible, Lord. And we'll thank you for helping us, Lord. And we pray for a great day, Lord. I do thank you for all of our missionaries tonight. And I failed to mention them a moment a moment ago. Brother Mike always does such a good job of it, but I failed to mention the steps there and. Uh, in, uh, in Spain, Lord, I pray that you'd help them and meet their needs for the tailors as well up in Alaska as they continue to plod along and go forward and do all that they can, uh, even in a challenging circumstance right now. Lord, I pray for the, uh, for the Joneses. While they are not financially supported missionaries of our church, they, uh, they were sent out from here to go into the military and be a cha and for him to be a chaplain and we know that they've got to move uh, upcoming and transition to Texas. We pray that you'll continue to bless and meet their needs. And Lord, I think of folks that have, have moved away recently. I pray for the Claytons as they're, getting, they're continuing to get settled in in Alaska. We miss them so much, Lord, and we've missed many through the years as they've come through and served uh, here at our church as they serve our country at Shaw. And then their time is up and they move on. 
And Lord, we pray that you'll continue to bless their life and, and, uh, and, and help them uh, to, to make the same kind, have the same kind of relationships and, and to have the, the same joy in serving the Lord there that they were able to have here. And Lord, we do pray that you'll meet the needs of our church family, those who are coming off of surgery for Teresa and for Miss Nina. Lord, we ask that you'd meet their needs and help them and encourage their hearts right now. Lord, we pray for those who are battling ongoing illnesses. We pray for Brother Murray Ellis and, and, uh, and for the Fanatis as well as they have such great struggles day to day. And the same for the Herrings, dear Lord. Lord, I think of Miss Marcy today and ask you, Lord, would you touch her body and give her grace to be able to be here on Sunday. I know that's the expressed desire of her heart. And Lord, I'll agree together with her tonight in prayer on that. And I think others will as well. And Lord, I pray that you'll work in her body and help her to be able to be here. I know it would mean so much to her. Lord, I didn't mention them a moment ago, but I pray for Sam and Ann Johnson. I know they're walking a very difficult path right now as well. I ask that you'd meet their needs. And Lord, we miss Brother Mike tonight. Pray that he'll feel better, Lord. I pray that, uh, that he'll not have any serious illness or anything like that, but that he'll feel well soon. And Lord, we pray also for Brother Tom Suggs as he battles cancer. I ask you to meet his needs tonight for the Wilkies as uh, they have um, just been here so very long and have been faithful members of this church through the years, but now are struggling uh, more and more with their health. And Lord, they need your help tonight. And I could say the same for the Levi's, Lord. We thank you for their many years of faithful service here. But Lord, we ask you that you'd meet their needs right now and encourage their hearts as they struggle along. Lord, we pray for those tonight who are, who are grieving. We pray for the Thomases, dear Lord, and we just ask that you'd be with Carla in a special way. I know these, these days this week are very difficult as she has to take care of all kinds of details and uh, appointments and different things that have to be uh, cared for. And, and just it has to, I'm sure it has to feel like an overwhelming wave after wave that hit her as she uh, takes care of all of these additional responsibilities and things that go that, that add to the weight of the grief that she already bears. And for uh, Roman as well, I pray you'll meet their needs tonight. Lord, I pray for uh, uh, Brother Brandon and Jessica as, uh, and for the, the rest of the Gleb family as they uh, uh, gather again there in Indianapolis for the funeral service. I do pray for traveling mercies as Brother Brandon uh, uh, flies up and then they drive back. I just pray that you will uh, meet their needs and give them grace uh, as they travel through the night. Give them safety on the roads and strength, Lord, as they want to get back for homecoming. We pray that you'll bless uh, in that. And Lord, we pray for great, uh, for great uh, grace for them as they go through another very hard day in this funeral service. And, and we just ask for your hand upon them. Uh, Lord, we do pray for, uh, uh, for Bridget's stepdad who's struggling, Lord, uh, and, uh, and is having uh, all these difficulties with his blood pressure. And Lord, we pray as, Lord, the, the, the physical health is, is very easy for us to see. But Lord, we know also that, that there is a spiritual side that is so very, very important. And I pray that you will speak to his heart and that he'll see his need of the Savior. Lord, I pray for her dad as he's struggling right now as well. God, we ask that you'd watch over him and give them answers to the issues that they deal with, that he deals with. Lord, I want to pray for uh, the, the Joneses tonight and especially for Maggette as she struggled so much uh, with COVID over the last two weeks. And I know just in talking to her that it's been a very, very rough ride for her and one that was quite unexpected, all things considered. And uh, I pray that you'll help her. I'm glad the rest of the family is doing well. I'm glad it seems like she's turned a corner. And Lord, I can tell just from talking to her, she's been much more sick than I was with it. And I just ask for your special grace and your hand upon her, on Adam and the kids. Uh, but especially for her as she tries to, to uh, fully recover from this and, and feel well and feel good uh, once again. Lord, we pray for little Crystal, the Pope's granddaughter, who has this heart valve issue. God, I ask for your help there, Lord. I know, oh, how I know what it is to be concerned for your grandchild who's sick, who's more sick than you expect them to be at that young age. God, I pray that you'd reach down and 
give doctors wisdom and that they'd be able to help her and that she would, uh, that she would uh, get, get the, the surgery and the healing and the help that she needs. Lord, I pray for mom and ask you to continue to watch over her tonight and help her for Kathy as well. I know the struggle is very great there and that I pray that, uh, that, that you'll minister healing to her as she tries to get past this, Lord, and, and, uh, and see these many places on her legs begin to heal. Lord, we pray for Gene Kelly that Brother Williams asked us to pray for, and we ask that you'd watch over him as he recovers from having to have this brain procedure uh, because of this brain bleed. I ask for your help there. We thank you for how you've watched over Brother Gene Rowell and helped him, Lord. I pray that you'll continue to minister to him and that he'll find his way back to the pulpit soon. Lord, for Becca Taylor, as she battles cancer, God, we ask you for your watch, care, and grace there. Lord, I pray for Brother David's brother, Danny. Lord, you know the need for him and for his family. I just ask that you'd watch over him. Lord, for Lenny Harrison tonight that Marie asked us to pray for. Lord, what a tough, tough situation they're dealing with, with pneumonia and, and infection and that foot, Lord, and uh, the concern about amputation. We just pray that you'll meet that need also, and we'll thank you for it as you do. Now, Lord, we need to hear from heaven tonight. I pray your word would touch our hearts. Lord, I pray that you'll give us a measure of spiritual strength tonight. I know, there's, I know there are folks here tonight who are weary in body. Uh, sometimes it's not, that, not necessarily that way, but Lord, I can identify with them tonight. Many of us are here tonight uh, that, our, that, that, that our spirit is willing, but our flesh is weak. And we need your help. And I pray that you'll help us to lock in for a little while tonight and be able to hear the word of the Lord and be edified by it. And we'll thank you for it. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Brother Chris, come and lead us in a song before the message tonight. All right, let's turn our eyes upon Jesus tonight. Amen. Oh, soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in this last and when we get to that chorus we're going to drop the, the piano and just sing it unto the Lord tonight let's sing it out sing it a cappella, and just sing as if we're that's what we want that's what we want our prayer to be tonight is just turn our eyes upon the Lord let's sing his word will not fail you he promised believe him and all will be well then go to Look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim. 
Turn with me, if you would, to Proverbs chapter 8. Fellas, I just realized that I forgot to get wired up tonight, so I'll try to remember to stay close here this evening uh, and, uh, and not get too far away from the microphone. Uh, as much, I, mean, I, can, I can be loud enough for in here, uh, but uh, I, for our live stream folks, I, I probably wouldn't be, uh, So uh, uh, obviously, so uh, I don't want to get too far away from the microphone. We, we were around the... Uh, we were around the campfire the other night, and whenever we have those camping trips, I always, I, I call it a devotion. Brother David was praying, I think it was the next morning, and said, Lord, Brother Pastor, call it a devotion. I think he just preached, and praise the Lord for it, you know, and I, I guess that is what I do, is kind of preach at that campfire, and, uh, and uh, I guess this, that point got underscored when I, the next morning, I didn't realize, I, I didn't get there at dark, but the, when I got there, as soon as I saw our crew, I came around the curve and I saw our crew, so I just pulled right up in there. I didn't pay attention to what else was going on. I went ahead and pitched my tent and everything, and they said, hey, it's time to eat. By the time I got my tent pitched, and I, so uh, we went and, uh, and ate, and by the time we ate, it was dark. And they kept saying that there was bathhouse, you know, restrooms, all that down the way down there. And I said, well, okay, when, when I need to get down there, I will. And I didn't, didn't think anything else about it. And uh, it was not until the next morning when I went down there in the daylight that I realized how many people other, how many other people were in that area there. There were a lot of campers and, and tents and guys in hammocks and all this kind of stuff out down through there. I just didn't realize how many people were down there. They were a good ways away from us. But uh, I looked at some of the guys and said, I didn't realize how many people were down there. They said, yeah, there's a good bit of folks down there. And, uh, and I said, well, you never know. Maybe they heard some of the preaching last night. They said, oh, yes, Pastor, they heard it. I'm sure that they did hear it. Uh, I, was, uh, I had a generator that was coming at me, so it sounded really loud. And Doug told me, he said, Pastor, you thought you had to compete with that generator, but we could hear you just fine. And uh, so I'm sure some others did down the way. There were some folks that we saw on their bus. They were from Columbia. I said, they're sitting down there thinking, we should have known better than to come to Sumter. <laughs> City folks camping out here with these Sumterites. Man, we're not going to Sumter again. Those people are crazy over there. But uh, we, had a, we, uh, we had a great time. Uh, I, I know that I'm taking my preaching time, and I have to be done on time with the teens, but I do want to share a blessing with you, and it just is another reason why I'm excited uh, for our homecoming on Sunday. Anybody that knows me well knows that I'm a nostalgic cuss. I really do. I, 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 I enjoy looking back and thanking God for what he's done. Uh, I got the, the rare privilege several years ago to be able to go back to my home church and preach a homecoming up there. And I was standing in a building that I'd driven a lot of nails in and that I'd spent a lot of time working on as a teenager up there. And it was a, a great opportunity. And so I've always been very, very in touch with the churches, any, anywhere I've pastored with the church's history and learning all that I can and finding out about it. And I've done the same here. And uh, this week, and I, I feel terrible because I know that I'm going to kick myself when I see that name, but I knew what would happen. I knew I would forget the name, and I wrote it down in my office. Uh, but earlier this week, uh, we had some folks uh, show up on the porch out here, and, uh, they said, and I was already out there talking to some guys and uh, they walked up and I said, hi, how you doing? They said, well, we're doing well. We used to be members here. And I said, oh, wow. I said, do you, do you live around here? Oh, no. I mean, we used to live, we used to be members here before we moved away from here. And they were in the military at the time. Uh, and uh, was it Laughlin? Is that the name, Donna? Does that sound familiar, Brother Richardson? Laughlin? The Laughlins? Okay. Bro Brother Bob says yes. And so, Miss Linda, I think they stayed with you for a little while over at the farm. Right before they moved away. That's why I was calling you yesterday. They were going to come by and drop in on you. But they'll be back. They told us they're going to come back and stay for a service sometime. Uh, and so uh, we're excited about that. Uh, but the Laughlins came by and they were here. They, w they moved away about 1985 or somewhere around in there. Uh, this building was not built yet. They said ground wasn't even broken for this building. And they stood out there and they said, yeah, we just wanted to kind of see. We got out of the car because he said, I'm having trouble remembering where the auditorium was back then. In other words, which one of these buildings? All, they were, all that was here when they left was the Berean room at, back there and a little, bit, a little bit more than the Berean room, but the old auditorium there. 
and, uh, and then the educational building parallel to it over there. But this auditorium, the Family Life Center, that parking lot, uh, they, were, uh, they were amazed. They saw, what's that WSSC out there in the yard? You got a, we all got a radio station. They didn't know anything about that. And I was able to tell them about all that. I gave them the 50-cent tour of the whole place. And we went over to the new studio and everything. And I told them how they could listen to us online. And they said they were going to do that. Uh, and they, they, just, they were just jaw-dropped at what God had done here since they left and how the Lord had blessed the ministry and uh, it was just a lot of fun for me to be able to show them all of the many blessings of the Lord here uh, at SBT uh, and so uh, uh, I, I, it made me that much more excited for this coming Sunday. All right you got your place there in Proverbs chapter 8. I got to move quickly here. We're talking here in Rob, Proverbs chapter 8 about wisdom's cry. If you've been here you know that wisdom is personified here and is and is spoken of as if, as if uh, she were a person unto herself. The, the literary device of personification is used here. And very quickly, just to remind you uh, of some of where we have been, in the, uh, in, the, in, the first, uh, in the first few verses here, we saw the appearance of wisdom. Uh, and, uh, and we saw that wisdom is vocal and it is visible and it is viable in those first four verses. Uh, and uh, as, as, as it is personified for us. And wisdom speaks over and over throughout this passage to us as, uh, as Solomon writes for wisdom there, uh, or, uh, speaking uh, for wisdom as if wisdom is speaking its very self. Uh, we, uh, and then uh, we saw the accessibility of wisdom uh, in verse 5. Uh, it is not something that God is dangling out there that you can't have. Uh, God uh, gives it to all men liberally, those who will ask, who will, are willing to receive it. Uh, God wants to give us wisdom. He is not playing games with us. He wants us to have it. And it's found primarily in the Word of God uh, and in prayer. And then last week we started talking about the accuracy of wisdom and uh, we didn't make it all the way through that, but I'll remind you where we got to and we'll press forward tonight. Beginning in verse 6, uh, we saw the first aspect of this accuracy of wisdom, that wisdom is holy. Notice in verse 6, Here for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness, there is nothing froward or perverse in them. Uh, we saw that wisdom is holy. It's, it, it is said here that wisdom uh, speaks of excellent, right things, truth, righteousness. All those words are used in connection with wisdom and what she has to say to us here in these verses. And you mark it down, if it's shady, if it's, if it's wrong, if it's laced with something worldly or sinful, it is not wisdom. Because wisdom is excellence, right things, truth, and righteousness. We noticed negatively last week also that there were some other things that were mentioned. Wickedness was mentioned in verse 7, that, that, that wickedness is an abomination to my lips. And then we saw a couple of words that we focused on at the end last week. Froward things, uh, 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 frowardness, and perverseness. I don't have that time to go back and remind you of all of that, but we, we talked in detail about what these words mean and illustrations of them elsewhere in Scripture uh, and how uh, we, when, we, when we begin to fight with the truth, rather than receive correction from it and receive it, when we fight with wisdom, uh, and, and by extension when we fight with the Word of God, we will ultimately wind up perverting it. Because if, when we fight with it, uh, we eventually start to twist it, to get it to try to, uh, to try to convince ourselves it means less or something different than it does, so that we can suit ourselves and go our own way and, and falsely try to convince ourselves uh, that we uh, are squared away with the truth. Uh, if you have to negotiate with it, you probably just need to let it alone. If you have to argue, about, uh, argue with yourself about it, you need to stay away from it. Uh, you, you, can't, you, you, you can't be wise and argue with wisdom. 
and you can't negotiate with evil. That's what Eve tried to do in the Garden of Eden. We all sit back here and say, man, that's not smart to be talking to that serpent, talking about doing uh, about how God's trying to keep you down and, and, and hold you back, and, and, uh, and it's really not that bad when God's told them it is that bad. Uh, that, that's not right. Well, when you start having a conversation with Satan, you can wind up doing some pretty unwise things. And so when you start having those discussions in your head, you better be careful because something unwise is about to happen. And we saw that wisdom is holy, the accuracy of wisdom, it's holy. Notice also tonight that wisdom is helpful. Notice if you will, verse 9. They are all, he's talking about the words of his mouth in verse 8, are in righteousness, there's nothing forward or perverse, forward or perverse in them. They are all plain to him that understandeth and right to them that find knowledge. Now here's the thing. Wisdom comes from the Lord. So it's bigger than us. And it's deeper than us, right? So I, I understand that and I know that and it, and it is true. But when, I, uh, when, when the Bible says here that they are plain to him that understandeth and right to them that find knowledge. Now I expect if the Lord gives me wisdom from the word of God that it's going to tell me things that I don't already know. It's going to tell me things that to the natural man are not going to make sense. It's going to be higher and bigger than, than, than I expect. And so as, I, as, as, wisdom, as wisdom comes to us, notice what it says. The words uh, of my mouth, I'm sorry, verse 9, they are all plain to him that understandeth and write to them that find knowledge. And, and here is what I understand him to be saying here. That if we seek knowledge, and, and where do we find knowledge? We find it primarily in the word of God. And if we, seek the under, if we seek to have an understanding spirit and we ask God, we open ourselves up to the word of God and say, Lord, teach me what is right. You see, you, you can't teach anybody, you can't teach anything to somebody that doesn't want to learn. I posted recently on my Facebook page something to the uh, 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 to something to this uh, to this effect that that frustration is trying to teach an unteachable person that they are in fact unteachable. Sometimes you just can't get somebody to stop talking long enough to tell them anything. Dad used to say, "Michael, if you're talking, you're not learning anything." That was troubling to a guy like me. Sure enough. And I'm just simply saying that if we have a desire for understanding and if we have a desire for a knowledge and we seek it, here's what Jesus said, Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Amen? And I'm going to tell you this, that's a principle that carries over, I believe, into some other areas. If you seek knowledge, if you seek understanding, the Lord will feed you according to your appetite. If you don't want it, He's not going to cram it down your throat. But if you want it, he'll feed you. He'll feed the open mouth of the Christian. So that kind of a person comes into contact with the teaching of wisdom. And it says that they are all plain to him that understandeth. God will take a person who has that spirit and that desire and will cause things that others might stumble at to open up to them. And to help them. By the way, being something that is wise does not have to be complicated and terrible to understand. Sometimes I think we misunderstand wisdom in that respect. The, the practicality of the Proverbs speak volumes to that. Now, I, if I were to take time and let you raise your hand, I don't have time to do that tonight... You'd be able to come up with some of these as well. But I, I, just, I just jotted down a couple just as examples. I, I, here's the practicality of Proverbs. There, is a pro, there are profound truths over and over again that are condensed to simple expression. And, and, and it's an amazing book because it takes profound truth but it expresses it so simply that you and I can get it. And see, that's what verse 9 is talking about. They are plain to him that understandeth and write to them that find knowledge. Let me give you a couple of examples, practical examples, okay? Now, a hillbilly from, a, a stump jumping hillbilly from the, the foothills of East Tennessee is telling you tonight 
practical, okay? So that means the jelly's got to get really down, way down on the bottom shelf, okay? Here it is. Here's a couple of examples. Proverbs 14, 4. Here's the profound statement. Where no oxen are, the crib is clean. But much increases by the strength of the ox. You want a clean barn? Fine. Don't put ox in it. Put ox in it. It's going to be messy. How many of you had that experience of cleaning up behind the ox or something similar to that? You know what I mean. Keeping a barn clean is not easy. Yeah, because there's livestock in there. And they make a mess. Now, if you want a clean barn, that's fine. Build you a barn. Keep it clean. But you better keep the animals out of it. Or it won't always be clean. You'll have to work to clean up behind them. And how many of you understand about this, how this works? You clean up behind them and you turn and you hear that it is suddenly no longer clean. They are already making another mess in it. Where no oxen are, the crib is clean. Right? But there's much increase by the strength of the ox. In other words, you need the ox. You need him to pull your plow. You need him to, to, to help you to move things around the farm. And what a tremendous, how practical that is. But, but, but here's, here's the, here, and there's so many applications. Parents, there are days that you love them. But they're about to drive you crazy. And the house is a mess. And you want it to be nice. And sometimes you just have to sit back. And I, I've looked at my kids, and God forgive me, I wasn't calling them cows, but I, I looked at my kids, and, I've, and, I, and, I, and I say, well, where no oxen are, the crib is clean. You know, if I didn't have the four kids God blessed me with, I'd have had a lot more quiet nights. I'd have had a lot cleaner house. And in some places, I'd have had a lot less, and sometimes I'd have had a lot less stress. But oh, the blessings I would have missed. Oh, I tell you what, it's worth it. And, and just a very practical truth. Here's another one. <laughs> now, there's got to be some other country folk in here that will appreciate this. Proverbs 30, verse 33. Surely the churning of milk bringeth forth butter. That's not rocket science. That's expected, right, on the farm. But then he says, and the ringing of the nose... Bringeth forth blood. That's pretty practical, isn't it, Doug? That, he's talking South 15 language down there now, isn't he, Brother Doug? Amen. So, the forcing of wrath bringeth forth strife. Don't you love how Proverbs kind of puts it down there and opens you up and gets you to smiling and then it goes and drives the truth home? Ringing of the nose bringeth forth blood. The churning of milk bringeth forth butter. Well, yeah, that makes great sense. God says, yeah, and when you force wrath and you, and you, won't, for, and you, won't, you won't let it go and you ex insist on exacting wrath, you'll bring all kinds of strife into your life. So don't be surprised when you light a fuse and an explosion happens. Now, that's good truth, amen? That's great wisdom. It's, it's profound truth. But it's expressed in such simple statements. Oh, the great wisdom of God. He speaks of lofty things, but he speaks of it in terms that the one who seeks understanding and wants to learn can receive it. He takes something that is profound and makes it very simple for those of us who have an appetite for the things of God. Wisdom is, is holy and wisdom is is helpful. We're talking about the accuracy of wisdom. Let me tell you this. Wisdom is humble. Notice, if you will, in verse 10. The first word, receive. Receive my instruction. Now let me just say this. If you're going to have the wisdom of God in your life, you're going to have to humble yourself. Here's what I mean. Notice he says, receive my instruction. Talk to me here. Who is speaking in this passage? Who is talking to us? Wisdom is speaking. Wisdom says, receive my instruction. Receive it. Now, you don't have to receive it. You can read it and decide that you don't like it. You can 
you can hear what wisdom says and say, yeah, but. And whatever comes after that's always bad. You, you can say, well, I understand that'd be the case for most people, but I think my situation is different, and don't we always? And don't we then eventually find out that we're not any different? So I need to receive wisdom. I hear it. I hear it talked about. I might even go get counsel and get wise counsel, but ultimately I have to decide to receive it. And this is where the humility comes in. If you and I will have wisdom beyond our years and if we will have the wisdom of God, if we will will have the ability from the Lord to discern things that are bigger and higher than us and be able to make decisions in a way that will be pleasing to God and look back and maybe you've had this experience in your life where you go through a situation and and, and you're just feeling your way around in the the dark and and, and you, you don't feel like at the time you're very smart and you don't feel like you know anything and then later you look back and you say, boy, if I'd have done different than that, then this would happen if I'd done different than that that would have happened and you realize all the way God was leading his dear child along and you didn't know and you didn't have a clue but you cried out to the God of heaven and even when you didn't know it he was imparting wisdom and helping you but you got to receive it you got to receive it and the humility involved here is the humility that says that I don't have it all figured out That I need to listen to somebody else. That I'm really not as smart as I'd like to think I am. You see, those who refuse to listen to or receive wisdom, ultimately their problem is is that they proudly think that they've got it figured out. They don't think they need to hear. They're too busy saying, I know, to consider that they don't. They're they're too busy moving on and tuning out to hear the wisdom that God is trying to give them. And when that happens, our pride puts us in a place where we refuse to receive the wisdom of God. I was talking to a ministry friend recently and we were talking about a particular situation and uh, some conversations he'd had with somebody he was trying to help. And I said, well, how did that go? And he said, well, here's what was discussed. Here was the counsel and the advice and the help that was offered. And I said, "Well, well, what was the response? How did that go? And he said, well, Brother Westmoreland, he, uh, he just had a lot of answers. A lot of answers. I said, oh, is that right? He said, yeah. I said, well, I'm sorry to hear that because I know what that means. Here's what I know my friend meant. He may not have said it this way, but here's what he meant. He meant I was trying to help somebody that really needed help, but they were too busy thinking they had all the answers when they don't even know the questions. Brother, I see your head nodding. You've been preaching too long. You've seen it. You know what I'm talking about. Or somebody's so convinced that they're okay. No, the most, I think maybe the most important word in verse 10 is receive. Receive my instruction. Don't just hear it. Don't just know it. I hear people say, how does a kid grow up in a church like this, have parents that love the Lord and go to church and hear the word of God preached and, and so forth? How does that happen? And sometimes I know that, 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 that what they're asking is how do, they, how do they hear all that and then go out and, 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 not, and not live that way and, and go the wrong direction and get out into the world. And sometimes parents spend a lot of time beating themselves up and assuming that they must have done something wrong, that somehow it must be their fault. Uh, and we forget that they got flesh just like I got flesh and they got free decisions to make that I just like I've got to make and they can fail just like I can fail. I cannot, I can, I can increase the likelihood that my child has spiritual success and lives for God but I cannot take away their opportunity to fail because they're a free moral agent just like I am. And sometimes parents beat themselves up. Here's the simple thing. You can with Any kid growing up, you can expose them to all the right things, but here's what you can't do for them. You can't receive. 
You can't receive it. Sometimes as kids get a little bit older and they hit those teen years, you can just kind of see it. The receiver has been turned off. And they're just not listening anymore. With, uh, the accuracy of wisdom. Wisdom's holy. Wisdom's helpful. Wisdom is humble. And if, 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 when, when, we, when, we are, when we humble ourselves, we come to the Word of God. And we don't just get our chapter in for today, but we... We look for real answers and real help for the situations of our life. And we understand that I don't know what I'm doing and I do need the help of God. I'm looking for that helping hand, for that light into my path because i got to take steps today and I don't want to step wrong. And, and, and we're holding tightly to the hem of the garment and saying, Lord, I need some help here today. When we humble ourselves, we listen to our elders. And I'm going to tell you what, I could just stop right there and preach a long time. And I want to tell you, uh, we, we are we having this thing in our culture today. It started in the 60s, and it's just getting, it seems like it's getting worse in every generation where we have just decided in this country nowadays uh, that old people are just in the way. We have all these initiatives put on ballots for assisted suicide. We're trying to decide, put it, putting in, trying to put in protocols to decide for somebody when their life is still worth living. Or not. And I understand there are a lot of difficult decisions to be made in those times, but, but what, what is happening is that we've come to a place in our country that we think older people just to be need to be moved out of the way. After all, they, know they, may, not, they may not be in tune with all the, te- all the newest technology and they may, not, uh, they, they may look at things a little bit different than folks do nowadays. And can I say this to you? That's the reason we should be listening to them. I'm not as old as I will be if God's gracious and gives me a long life. But I'm older than I was. At 50 years of age, I'm kind of standing between two generations. I've got some folks before me that have seen and experienced and know a lot of things that I don't know. And I've got some folks behind me that are still trying to figure out some things that I just went through. And I will tell you this, one of the things I've noticed even about middle-aged people, and I noticed this more as a young pastor, and it scares me because at the phase of life I'm in, I don't want to make the same mistake. I I, I didn't have a hard time pastoring seniors when I was a 20-something that didn't know what I was doing. The the people that I had the hardest time pastoring that gave me the most fits, God help me, it's people the age I am now. Scares me to death. I don't want to be that guy. You know what, well, eventually we can decide, you know, I've figured it out. I've, I've learned some things. Well, thank God we have learned some things, but I'm going to tell you what, I'm still learning from my elders. Listen, you need to make sure you've got some people that are, this may be more challenging for some than others, I understand, but you need to make sure you've got some people that are older than you that, that you can call on. If the only people you ever ask advice from are people the same age as you, you or younger, you are making a big mistake. Because there, are, there, there is something to be said for experience and for having lived a while. And God says the hoary head is a crown of glory if it be found in the way of righteousness. We need to listen to the Lord through His Word and through His Spirit. We need to listen to our elders and humble... Here again, why do we think that we don't need to listen to those that have gone before us? Let's just be honest about it. We're so stinking proud we think we're smarter than we are. That's what's going on in our culture today. And we need to listen to counsel. The Bible has a lot to say about counsel. Now look, if you listen to, if you, if you try to, if you try to submit to and obey all the counsel you'll get, you'll make a big mistake because every counselor is not right. Could I say this? No counselor is right all of the time. I heard a doctrine taught in church years ago, and I believe it is absolutely wrong. I heard several preachers say it when I was younger. They said, I, I, you, you, need to, you need to have somebody that's older than you that you give veto power in your life. I said, oh, I already got one of those. The Ancient of Days. The eternal one who hath no beginning and no end. The creator of all things has the veto power in my life. What they were saying is you need one person. No, you don't need one person that you get all your counsel from. Why? Because they're a sinner too. 
and they can be wrong too. This is why the Bible tells us here in the book of, uh, here, here in the book of Proverbs, Proverbs 24, 6, For by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war, and in the multitude of counselors there is safety. And, 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 there, and there is help when we, when we seek counsel. When we find someone who is, has the marks of wisdom in their life or several people who have the marks of wisdom in their life and say, pray with me and help me. And by the way, here's what I'm facing. And what do you think? Now look, I, 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 can, I can make a mistake just as much as ever, anybody. And please don't misunderstand me. I'm not, I'm not looking to drum up business. That's not why I'm going to say what I'm about to say. But here, here's what gets me as a pastor through, through the years. So many times I've had people come to me and they say, they say the funniest thing. They say, preacher, pray with me about this. You know, had to make a decision about this and this. And, I'm, and, I, and, I'm, and they're making a big decision, a huge decision. And they've already made it. And they say, preacher, pray with me about that. <laughs> and I'm like, well, you know that I could have prayed a little better if you'd have talked to me about it before you already made the decision and made up your mind and decided what you're going to do. And they've already gotten so invested in it. Now they just want me to pray that they're right. <laughs> and all my prayers won't change that one way or the other. Right is right, amen, is whether I pray about it or not. And wrong is wrong. But, there, but, but, but get, don't, don't, don't think you're so smart that you can't get counsel from somebody else. I do that. I've got some people that I call on that I, you know, when I'm making decisions. And uh, I, I've got some friends that I'll, that, that I'll get in touch with. And I'm thinking of one right now. He's... He, it, it's not uncommon for me to call him when he answers the phone. He said, hey, I just want to make sure I'm not being that guy again. I want to ask you and see if I'm handling this the right way because I don't want to make a mistake because I'm too proud to ask for help. Wisdom's accurate. Here's the point. Wisdom's just right, man. <laughs> Wisdom is right. And it's proven there as wisdom testifies about all of those things, ending up with the fact that, that, that we just have to be humble enough to receive that counsel. Let's ask for the Lord's help tonight. Father, we love you and thank you for the gift of wisdom. I pray you'll help us to receive it. I pray you'll help us to understand that you are higher and bigger than us and that we need the wisdom that only you can give. Lord, drive your people to seek your wisdom in the days ahead. May we go to passages like the Proverbs and the Word of God or all throughout the Word of God and diligently search for your wisdom. We cannot have it if we don't seek it and you will feed us according to our appetite. So Lord, my prayer in this study here on these Wednesday nights in Proverbs 8 is that you will whet our appetite, cause us to desire it, cause us to want it, and help us to be humble enough to receive it. And we'll thank you for what you do. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming out tonight. Parents of teens, I need to dismiss you to head over to the Family Life Center and pick up your teens over there. I'm going to let you get a head start. The rest of us are going to remain seated for a moment and wait for the ushers to come and help dismiss us tonight.